the old men in One Piece, some of the most beloved characters in the story. And while it's great with these characters, this isn't just a One Piece thing. Old characters, old men in shonen anime, they get a lot of love because typically they're portrayed as what the MC could be, but wiser. They're typically very strong characters, wise, drippy, charismatic, with a story to tell. And so I was here rewatching some episodes of One Piece, rereading Sabaody, rewatching Marineford, rewatching the Odin flashback, and then I thought of these three guys, Roger, Rayleigh, Garp. Sengoku will be mixed in as well, but those three mainly. And I wanna talk about the old man trio and their history and just the legends of back in the day. And if you care about shit like that, sub to the channel because we talk about things like this all the time. Drop a like as well, because I would certainly appreciate that. And let's just continue here, okay? Garp and Rayleigh, they're two characters that are fan favorites. I would say Rayleigh more than Garp, but people are coming around to Garp because people are starting to understand Garp and his decisions. Full disclosure, I hated Garp for a long time. Why? Because I love Ace. And so I blamed Garp for Ace's decisions or things that Ace went through because I felt like Garp could have stopped it. Could he have? Possibly. Did he make the right decision by not doing anything? For the most part, yes. But there are things that he did that aided Ace's situation. He let Luffy get past him. Garp could have wreaked havoc at Marine Ford. He is one of the strongest Marines ever. Even at Marine Ford, he was one of the strongest fighters there. He sat down and he talked to Ace. That dialogue, that back and forth, that apprehension, that doubt, those emotions that Garp went through sometimes made you forget that you were reading a story or watching an anime because it felt human. As much as the Monkey D family are monsters, that moment humanized Garp for me. And if we jump a bit further to when Garp returned to the village and with Makino and Dadan, it had a great impact. So when you look at the full picture and you think of Garp and that situation with Ace, his hands for the most part were tied. Do you throw away your legacy for pretty much your grandson, even though you warned him not to do the things that he was doing? It's a tough situation. He is the hero of the Marines. If Garp had defected in front of everyone, that would have changed the world forever. Granted, the world did change forever regardless, but the Marines obviously got stronger post time skip. They did. They would have gotten weaker, a lot weaker, and people would have stopped believing in the world government because the hero of the Marines, the face of the Marines, defected at Marine Ford and joined the pirates, and more than likely Ace would have gotten away. So Gart made a very difficult decision, and so you respect him for it. With Rayleigh, Rayleigh's such an endearing character because, of course, he's the main character's sensei, mentor, however you want to put it. I think what Rayleigh exudes is this old man energy that you get from so many different anime. And it's like he's breathing life into it every time he's on screen. Rayleigh, every time he shows up in the story, is phenomenal, even in the flashback. <laughs> where Luffy needs to think about some shit to get stronger. As much as I clown the Rayleigh flashbacks, I always relish seeing Rayleigh. I've talked about this before and people don't like when I say this, but I would always question Rayleigh's purpose. When you think about him, what do you think of? Is he just there to train Luffy? Yes, he's the right hand of the Pirate King, the Dark King, and based on his epithet, you can just surmise that this guy could have been a king if he wanted to be. He could have opposed Roger, opposed Garp, opposed Shiki, opposed Sengoku, opposed Whitebeard. He's that type of individual. And that's the feeling you get from him. He has no weakness as a fighter. Swordsman, martial artist, hockey user, conquers hockey, observation hockey, arm and hockey, Rio. I know it's hockey, but shut up. That's the type of person that Rayleigh was. But when I question his purpose, again, I'm rambling here. But when I say I question his purpose, guys, just stay with me, okay? I'm literally just spilling my thoughts to you and how I feel about these characters. Because I love these characters. We're going to talk about Roger a bit later and how I've fallen in love with Roger when I didn't give a damn about Roger before the flashback. But let me not say I didn't give a damn about Roger, but I didn't care about him as much. I thought his design was weird. Him starting a great pirate era was really cool, but I had questions. And boy, did I get answers. But for Rayleigh, I questioned his existence existence, his purpose, because when you look at who Roger was going against, it was Shiki, Whitebeard for the most part, but then we found out about Rox. But initially, when you think of Shiki and Whitebeard, they have no prominent number two, especially Shiki. Whitebeard, you think of Marco, but Marco, when the Roger pirates were really around, like let's say Roger and Rayleigh's Jordan and Pippin, Whitebeard didn't have anybody. Marco was a child, and we saw in the anime, granted it's the anime, and I think this is a very logical gap between the two, Marco blitzed Rayleigh and Rayleigh stopped him with one finger. He's a child. Rayleigh, at that point, they were close to the end of their journey. Rayleigh's in his prime. One finger. So then I asked myself the question, would Roger beat a Power King without Rayleigh? When he was opposing the White Beard Pirates, even though they fought for three days, there's nobody on that side. Maybe you could say Odin, but Odin was fighting Scopper. Who is opposing Rayleigh? Who is stopping that man? On Shiki's crew, granted Shiki had 
numbers, the ad war. He surrounded Roger and you know, Roger, he got out of it. However he did, he got out of it. So then you question his existence. Yes, he's cool. Yes, he makes sense. He's somewhat of a parallel to Luffy and Zoro, but everything he represents is what Zoro is to Luffy. But is he needed? The Roger pirates are plenty strong enough without him. Having him is overkill. And I've talked to people about this before, where it's like, I don't know the purpose of Rayleigh outside of him being there for Luffy to elevate him to where he is now. Then I caught myself. What am I talking about? <laughs> That's disrespectful. Whether or not he's necessary, we don't know. We have no idea how strong Rox was. The Rox pirates had Big Mom, Kaido, Whitebeard, Shiki. They also mentioned that was Roger's greatest enemy, the Rox. And it was great enough to the point that Roger needed Garp's help, or vice versa, Garp needed Roger's help. So in essence, questioning Rayleigh's purpose is disrespectful, borderline idiotic. <laughs> but those are things I think about. Balance. I care about balance. For people that's been following the channel for a while, you understand that I have been questioning, and you remember, I had been questioning Whitebeard's crew for years, saying that the second commander, whomever it was, would have been the strongest person after Whitebeard. I have been saying that. Now all of a sudden Odin comes around. Oh, Odin was on Whitebeard's and Roger's crew. Makes sense. But Rayleigh is, again, Rayleigh exudes an energy that I am dying to get a prequel of Roger and Rayleigh. But then... When I think of Roger and Rayleigh, I think of that first encounter where Garp said, this is the person I have to go after. Like, what was the moment where Garp felt like Gold Roger and Dark King Silver's Rayleigh were the people that he had to chase to the ends of the earth because they were threats to the world? So now quickly on Roger, the Pirate King. I think what I love the most about Roger is how free-willed he was. But not only free-willed, he was smart. He's very much like Luffy, but the reason why he's different is that he's spearheading the journey, where he cares about every single aspect of the journey. Luffy cares about the journey, but there's certain things that Luffy just doesn't bother himself with because he has people around him that does that. Roger had those people as well. But still, he's spearheading reading the Poneglyphs. He's spearheading the route the navigation. He's hands-on with everything, where every aspect of the journey matters. Roger's words about fighting Whitebeard and going to where Whitebeard is because he doesn't have much time left is legendary. Toughing it out even though you know you're going to die to find the One Piece, putting on a brave face for your crew is legendary. Preparing for Whitebeard. Again, we all remember that attack where he's glorious and magnificent waiting for this attack is legendary. And knowing that the Pirate King had this level of strength and was able to traverse the seas the way he did, it's unmatched. That is why he's the greatest. And even when Luffy does everything he does with the One Piece, it's hard to put him greater than Roger because Roger had to figure things out. Right, he sailed much longer. Yes, Odin fell into his lap, but he had to fight Whitebeard to get him. Everything else, going to Big Mom's territory, getting her Poneglyph, going to Fishman Island not once but twice, making all these friends, making all these enemies, being chased by the strongest Marine ever. But then that relationship, it intertwines, right? Because the more you fight somebody, the more you gain respect for them. And that's what happened to Roger and Garp. To the point that Roger, when he was about to die, he left his son with Garp saying to protect him. They fought at God's Valley together to take down the greatest pirate crew ever. There was a conversation I saw where people were debating whether or not Garp was strong enough to be recognized as a true rival to Roger. I was like, well, he never brought him in. That's something I used to question. Well, he never brought him in. He's never injured him that we know of. But there are translations there, right? Because for the official translation, we, what we can see now is saying that they killed each other numerous times. Or they attempted to kill each other numerous times. But that's apparently not a great translation because pre-time skip from the official, the translation is not great for several things. One thing is Mihawk and Shanks. It says that they fought one time. That's not true. From the official translator now, so then people would question Garp and Roger. Really question that rivalry. When you hear from the official translator, it's translated to say that they had intent to kill each other every time they met. They both survived. So therefore, give Garp his damn credit. It's unfortunate that Roger did not get to live to be an old man like Rayleigh and Garp, but I'd be interested in the conversation between those two. Rayleigh and Garp, talking about Roger, talking about why Roger chose to give Garp Ace instead of Rayleigh, talking about old times. Maybe that could be the beginning of the prequel, a conversation between Rayleigh and Garp where they stumble upon each other. I will never forget in Sabote the first time I read when Garp was talking about legends of the past, saying, hey, we know where he is, but we just don't bother him. And we can't manage him right now because we're already taking on Whitebeard. We don't want to take on two legends at once. Gosh. 
that is the ultimate respect. Roger's gone, Garp is still here, Rayleigh's still here. So I want to appreciate those guys. The old man trio and show Sengoku some love as well. I'll talk about him probably in a separate video because I think Sengoku, as accomplished as he is, doesn't get nearly the respect that these three get. And it's insane. I think he gets as much respect as Kong, where Kong does not deserve half of what Sengoku does. And it's insane. But guys, give me your thoughts. I'm sorry. I just, I really enjoy these characters and they've grown on me and I have disrespected them in the past. And this is a public apology to Silver Israeli, the Dark King, Gold, the Roger, the Pirate King, and Garp, the greatest Marine ever. You three are amazing. And I appreciate what you've brought to this story. And I can't wait to learn more about these characters. But guys, give me your thoughts. How do you feel about these characters? Which one is your favorite? Don't forget to comment for Miss Algo, even if you have nothing to say. Like the video if you did. Subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Follow me on Twitter at BragoDAce. Follow me on Instagram at BragoD.Ace. Thank you to my patrons. I appreciate you guys so much. Guys, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. I start doubting me, I felt lost. I rewrite it.